Hi, this is Claude Yancey here at the 2011 American College of Cardiology meeting. Delighted to bring to you Trials and PIs, a very important segment on the heart.org that gives us the opportunity to discuss with you and with the principal investigators here at the ACC meeting the important late-breaking clinical trials. So to start our discussion about the Magellan trial, I'm delighted to introduce to you Ander Cohen, who is an investigator from Great Britain and has had a ton of experience in this field. Welcome. Thank Thanks. you so much for being thank, here. Andy. Thank you, Claude. I would love for you to start off by just setting up the premise. Why this study? Why another study? You've got so much evidence already about Rivaroxaban. Yeah. Why this study? Well, we did this study because about 60% of the attributable risk of venous thrombosis is in medical patients and not in surgical patients. So we see about 25% um, of the attributable risk being related to surgery and about 60% related to non-surgical illnesses. You know. Right. So as you decided to recruit your patients, I'm fascinated at how you collected them. How did you identify the patients to enroll in this study? Well, it's a, it's a fairly well-worn path. There's been a number of studies previous to this that uh, myself and other investigators have been involved in. Um, in 1999, we published the Mednox study, which looked at patients with heart failure, respiratory failure, infectious disease, and inflammatory disease. And then in 2004, we published the uh, PREVENT study, uh, which was the study using Delta Parin, and we looked at a similar group. And in uh, 2006, we published the Artemis study, which used Fondoparinux in this setting. Now, we had a broader group of patients. So we had patients not just with heart failure, respiratory failure, infectious disease and inflammatory disease. We also had patients who had acute ischemic stroke and cancer. So we had a very broad, acutely ill medical patient group. So in addition to recruiting this very large patient population of 8,000 individuals with medical illnesses where they are clearly at risk, um, it really intrigues me to think about your study protocol. So can you share that with us for a moment? Certainly. Um, the protocol enrolled patients over the age of 40 uh, who had been hospitalized uh, and were going to be immobile for at least four days, one of those days being in hospital. And the patients were randomized into a double blind, double dummy, multi-center, multinational study. The two arms of the study were the, the rivaroxaban arm, sure. where they received 35 days of oral rivaroxaban, 10 milligrams daily, or the anoxaparin arm, mm. where they received 40 milligrams of anoxaparin subcutaneously once daily, and after the first 10 days, they then received placebo. So very intriguing design, and certainly set up to answer the important question of what is the advantage potentially of rivaroxaban in this setting. So let's just get right to it. What did you find? Well, we had two primary efficacy outcomes because we had two questions. The question of whether rivaroxaban was a, as effective as anoxaparin in the first 10 days because that was a head-to-head -head comparison. Sure. And our study showed that they were equally effective in the first 10 days. So you could take an oral medication and have just as much effect as a subcutaneous medication. And equally effect effective as determined by similar um, um, statistical assessments or by defined non-inferiority boundaries? Defined non-inferiority boundaries. The, the relative risk reduction was slightly less than one, favoring rivaroxaban, but it was so close to one and it, it easily achieved non-inferiority okay based on a margin of 1.5. And so the second question was what? Second question was, would extended rivaroxaban for 35 days mm -hmm. be superior to shorter term prophylaxis with an oxaparin for 10 days? And it was. We got a 22% relative risk reduction. So as we wrap this up for the audience, two um, questions that I think are very important. First, the take home message, our messages from Magellan about large volume deep vein thrombosis and thromboembolic disease. And then the second one is to take advantage of your experience and look at the overall profile of risk 
and benefit for rivaroxaban because our viewership is wondering will we be using this drug and what are the things about which we should be concerned yeah. and in terms of benefits what kind of benefits should we anticipate so crisply and quickly tell us about the take home from Magellan first well the take home message from Magellan is uh, that we're still analyzing the data because there was more bleeding in the river Oxaban arm both at day 10 and at day 35 and as a result of that, there was not a clear net clinical benefit. So very important point. Yeah. So now we integrate that statement into everything else we have been trying to understand about river rocks band and all the different scenarios after orthopedic surgery, in the setting of a deep vein thrombosis, in the setting of atrial fibrillation, and now in these with these new data from Magellan, what are the two or three messages about river rocks band as a drug now? that we can leave with our viewership? Well, I think that this is an unusual finding. We showed clear net clinical benefit in our other studies. So in uh, atrial fibrillation with the Rocket AF, in the Einstein studies of uh, DVT treatment and DVT and PE extended treatment, we showed net clinical benefit. Uh, and of course, in the record studies, we showed net clinical benefit. I think that these patients in the Magellan study are different. They're older, they're, they're sicker. There was the mortality rate uh, was five percent at uh, 30 days, which is you know very high, um, and they had far worse renal function. Uh, over 60 percent had an elevated um, um, or, or reduced creatinine clearance, I should say. I think that these patients are completely different from the patients that we enrolled in the atrial fibrillations and the, D and the DVT and the orthopaedic studies. And so the, the findings in Magellan don't translate into these other areas. And so it sounds like if we were trying to convey a message to the, to the viewership, we would say, look, we have a new anticoagulant. It has a different mechanism of action than the other anticoagulants that we've been considering. Yeah. Um, certainly we have to be sensitive to the risk of bleeding. There at one time was a concern about hepatotoxicity. I think that's been reduced somewhat by all the studies we have. That's right. We saw absolutely no hepatotoxicity. And we looked in a cumulative sense at 90 days, and the liver function was perfect throughout. And then finally, it is conceivable that the way this drug is coming forward, we will at first use be able to deploy it in a number of different clinical scenarios, potentially for the benefit of our patients. Yeah, and I think that's true. I mean, I should point out that um, that when we looked at the other factors like cardiovascular mortality, total mortality, there were no differences. And in the outcomes, there are a number of lives saved from the prevention of pulmonary embolism and DVT. And so. we can't forget that. That's why uh, we're treating those yeah. deep vein yeah. clots. Now, as we're talking about rivaroxaban, I want to be complete here because I know that early on there were questions about hepatotoxicity, but some of those questions are of much less concern now, but your thoughts on that? Well, I think they are of less concern, and certainly in this large study of sick patients, the Magellan study, there were no changes in liver function that made us concerned. So that at least factors into the equation. but. As we talked about already, the net clinical benefit in the Magellan study was neutral. We didn't really see that with Rivaroxaban. Yeah. And some of that has to be in consideration of the risk of bleeding so that we put the benefit on thrombosis with the risk of bleeding and understand where we are. So a lot of work still needs to be done, but yeah. thanks to you and others, we're getting the answers that we need. Thank you, Claude. I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks.